Now I did mention that we need to have some understanding of seawater density because seawater density tells us something about buoyancy. And this is really an important concept again, like there's many important concepts in this chapter, but in order to understand again how the ocean works as a system, how it layers itself out, how properties like temperature and salinity and pressure can create habitats for organisms, how seawater density influences productivity of the oceans, how it influences climate. You need to understand something about the relationship between density and temperature and salinity. And here we go. So all these things, as I said, are important. Density is simply the amount of matter that you pack into a given volume. Okay, so if you think about a cereal box, uh, it has so much uh, cereal in that box and when you open up the box only half of it might be full and that's because the contents settle as that cereal is transported from somewhere in the Midwest to your home here in California and it becomes more dense okay but so most of you should be familiar with the concept of density and some one thing being more or less dense than the other but here's the official definition the mass of a substance present in a specific volume or the mass per unit volume. Um, density can have uh, units of cubic meters. So kilograms per cubic meter are going to be the number of grams or number of kilograms in a cubic meter. And a cubic meter is about a, uh, a yardstick, about a yard, not quite, on three sides. So if you think of a cube, that is about one yard by one yard by one yard, that's a cubic meter. And the amount of kilograms of a substance that's in that cubic meter defines its density. As I said earlier, both temperature and salinity affect the density of CO water, but as we'll see, in different ways. And it's probably easier to think about how salinity might affect seawater density if you have water itself, and we're going to pretend that this water bottle is full, and if I were to add salt to this water and it dissolves, well now I have more matter in this bottle and so its density has gone up. It's become saltier because I've added salt to it and its density has increased. So it should make some sense to you then that salt water is more dense than fresh water, and it should make some sense to you then that the saltier the water, the more dense it becomes. Okay? So, salinity has what we call a positive relationship with density. As we increase the saltiness of the water, or add salts, its density goes up. As we add fresh water, we decrease the salinity and its density goes down. Now I really want you to kind of make sure you can visualize this, okay? As you're adding salts, you're increasing the density. It's becoming more dense. As you add fresh water, you're diluting those salts. You're creating less matter per unit kilogram per cubic meter, and it's becoming less dense. It's really important to understand the relationship between saltiness and density. And I think most people get that, but sometimes you get confused. But if you just stop and think a little bit, activate those neurons in your head, then you'll get it, okay? It's when you try to memorize it and try to remember it and recall it later that you get confused. But if you start from what you know and start from first principles and use little common sense, then you will understand more salty, more dense. Less salty, less dense, okay? <clears throat> All right, temperature, excuse me, Temperature is the opposite. Temperature has what we call an inverse or negative relationship with density. Okay, let's think about this one in the same kind of way. When you heat air up, or heat even water up, though you might not know this, but if you heat air, it expands. Again, think about the hot air balloon. It's becoming less dense. So as temperature is going up, density is going down. The air is expanding. We have less air per cubic meter, and so its density is going down. The same thing is true with water. As you heat water, it expands. It's called thermal expansion, 
and it's one of the contributing factors to sea level rise with global warming as a matter of fact. So as you're heating up water, it's becoming less dense. The opposite is true if we're cooling water down. If you cool water or cool air, it becomes more dense. Have you ever wondered why air conditioners are put at the top of the, of the ceiling? Why the air can then sink? It's because cool air sinks. And the same thing's true in the ocean. Cold water sinks. So, an inverse or negative relationship between temperature and density. So as the temperature goes up, the density goes down. As the temperature goes down, as we lower the temperature, the density increases or goes up. Okay? Think about those and make sure you have this. You should be able to kind of work it out just from your little mind experiments. If you need to memorize it, well, that's fine, but it's easier, and I always do this, it's easier to kind of think about what's happening and think about how that relates to the density. Because what I just explained to you explains everything in this figure, figure 718 in your book. Let's take a few minutes to look at this figure. Let's start with things that increase the density of the ocean or density of seawater. So if the if the atmosphere is cooling seawater or if winds are cooling the surface of the ocean then it's becoming more dense. It's increasing its density. Even ice. Even if we have an iceberg floating from one place to the next, that iceberg is going to be cooling the water that it encounters. And in doing so, it's increasing its density. In other words, it's making it more dense. Evaporation also increases the density. Blue arrows here are processes that increase density. Why does evaporation increase the density of seawater? It increases the density of seawater because evaporation is leaving salts behind. So just like we were adding salts to the bottle of water, evaporation is doing the same kind of thing. So it's increasing the density of those surface waters. And a similar process happens when we form ice. As temperatures drop in polar regions and sea ice forms, it rejects those salts. It's a process called brine rejection. And in rejecting those salts, it increases the density of the seawater. Okay, let's look at processes that lower the density or increase the density. Aren't you always amazed how long we can spend on a single figure? This is the kind of time that you should be spending on these figures because you're going to be asked to explain this figure in the next exam. I promise. So, if we melt sea ice, we're adding fresh water. Fresh water makes the water less dense okay, because we're lowering its salinity. If we add fresh water from rivers, it's making the ocean less dense. We're lowering its salinity. If we add rain to the surface of the ocean. Remember, low, adding fresh water, lowering the salinity, less salinity, less density. Okay, So these are processes that are making the ocean less dense. If we heat the surface of the ocean, either directly from the sun, or if we heat it because the atmosphere, an air mass comes down, a warmer air mass, and heats the atmosphere, it's causing that expansion of seawater, and it's causing the density of the seawater to become less. We're lowering the density. And one that's not given in this particular figure, but somewhere down here at the bottom of the ocean, there is a process that might heat up the ocean. What could that be? Hmm, maybe I'll ask you on the exam. If you can't figure it out, email me.